Hey everybody, welcome back to the second devlog of my little Python game development project. And you know what, let's go with the working title Sharks, since I called all the files Sharks already. And today you can see I worked a little bit more on the whole boat animation. And animation is actually what I kind of have the most difficulty with developing a game without any of the kind of animation frameworks that you get with game development softwares like Unity for example. So I was playing around a bit with the ship idea and you can see now when it arrives it turns around and it leaves again. And the turn is still very very awkward, it's just something I was struggling a bit with. And then there's another thing I want to add today, there's actually a few things but let's go one step at a time. The first thing I'm curious about is something like a particle system that you would get in Unity. And I want to have maybe a little bit of a particle effect when the sharks collide with the land. Possibly even when they're swimming um, or at least when they're scared away from the projectile like this. So this is something I'll be starting out with this week's devlog. But first let's try and fix up this boat. It is the next evening now already and I went a bit overboard with the whole boat stuff so I didn't even get around to the particles but look at that we now have a, a more decent boat graphic and it is indeed ridden by another arrow character. Yep, instead of getting rid of the player uh, character uh, and make it a proper sprite Yes, I added another one of these arrows. But hey, come on, it's, it's, it's kind of cute, isn't it? <laughs> but I spent much more time than I intended to on that already. So let's move on. And by move on, I mean to something completely unrelated that I haven't even talked about yet. And that is a user interface. So now we have buttons. I got this button class from a tutorial. I'll link in the description if you're interested but I customized it to suit my needs and now we actually have a proper game pause menu we can resume and we can also quit from here. As you probably know, these things never go as planned. However, I am determined to get at least started on the particle system. So this is what I'm gonna do this morning. First of all, let's get an idea of what our particle system should have, and then we can figure out what we need to do to make it happen. First of all, um, coordinates, I would say. Then, possibly a velocity at which they are ejected probably also an angle or orientation in which it should be ejected. I might make this actually an array of a minimum and maximum angle and then I'm going to randomize it a bit so they are distributed more evenly across the screen. We probably need something like a lifetime after which the particle despawns and of course we need a shape and a color of the particle. All right, I think that is a decent set of properties that we can start out with. We might add more stuff later, but for now, let's get this implemented. Okay, I drew up a little bit of a particle class here with the initialization where we have the coordinates, a speed, an angle a tuple, which we can randomize between, a color, oh, it's particle size. I think we forgot to mention that earlier, and the shape and the lifetime and then we have a move function which simply moves the coordinates of the particle by the velocity times the time that has passed since the last update and the same time is also subtracted from the particle lifetime and when the lifetime hits below zero we return false and then we have the very simple draw function which just returns one of these dictionaries that I can feed then to our render queue function later. In this case, I only implemented the circle shape so far, but this should be enough to do a quick little test. 
And in the main game loop, we just have this little paragraph here. If the game is not paused, we loop over all the particles, we move them. If the move was successful, we draw them. And if not, we remove the particle from the list of particles. All right, right now I only emit particles from the boat. So let's have a look. Yeah, there are some particles, some black circles emitting from the tip. Right now, of course, only one angle, but uh, generally this seems to work. So let's go and refine this a bit from here. Okay, I added a couple more parameters to the particles being generated by the boat tip. I made the size a bit smaller and I added an angle which is offset by pi quarters from the orientation of the boat. Here we go. Oh, look at that. <laughs> kind of. I don't know if the angles are correct. Definitely interesting. Nope, the angle is definitely not correct. Okay, the direction is correct now and I also reduced the particle distance a bit but yeah this doesn't look good at all does it need some more work like I got it to work, doesn't it? <laughs> so I changed the test subject from the boat to my spear just so I have an easier time controlling it and actually seeing it. And this works quite well. I'm really, really pleased with this. Almost looks like this game needs some magic, huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. So what I do here now is I generate particles 360 degrees and this actually looks really nice even with the movement because some particles are going to move with the movement and some against it. So this is a good distribution and this looks much nicer. And now let's have a look at the boat. We have two different ones actually on this one. So I, I changed it to the back of the boat because that seemed like it made more sense and it looks much nicer than having it at the tip of the boat. And I also implemented uh, rectangular particles and they actually almost look a bit nicer, I think. If you look at it, the left ones are the rectangular ones. It looks a bit more full and a bit more interesting. But yeah, this is a very simple, very, very simple particle system and I'm actually quite happy with it. Let's have a quick look at the particle class. This is all the code needed to generate a nice little particle system. And of course, as our use cases grow, we will adapt this accordingly. But for now, I think this is a good start. And here we are, particles fully implemented. One of the particle effects is the collision of the sharks with the land tiles. And the other effect that I added is the scare effect. So once the sharks are scared by our projectiles, they now have a little bit of a water squirt coming out the back. And the boat, of course, has a little particle effects in the back, which I, I might also work on it a bit more in the future. But yeah, really happy with what we have now. So before we end today's devlog, I want to add one last little polishing feature. And that is I want to try and get a slight animation in the water tiles to really make it feel more organic and more alive. Well, my first attempt didn't go quite so well. I thought it might be a good idea to just add some random noise to the tiles, but yeah. L let's try this again. Plan B is to use structured noise like this here. And this is actually something I already used for the terrain generation, just as an additional add-on to make the islands look a bit more interesting. But as you can see, every time we load it, we get slightly different patterns of noise. So this is definitely something we can use. So now let's just use a fixed seed so we can get the same one every time. And now we need to animate it. Basically, if we want to simulate something like waves, we can have the noise move along one direction. So let's create an offset that we apply to our coordinates. And I guess we can do it only in one direction for now. And now if we keep adding to our offset, 
it should move slowly over to the left. So now if we do it for both our indices, we should have a diagonal noise. And implemented into our game, this is what we end up with. And it's a good start. It's definitely much better than what it was before, but uh, it still looks a bit ethereal and not really like waves. There's a couple things we can try. We can make the noise a bit more high frequency. And what we can also do, or at least what I want to try, is to have the waves converge on the island. And that means we have to sum up different moving noise patterns towards the center. I don't know if we can blend them properly, but I think I wanna give it a try. Let's go step by step from here. So here we have our first wave component, which is scaled by the column we are currently in and we add the offset to the column, but not to the row. And that should give us our movement only along the columns, but as you can see, it's scaled. So the right one is over exaggerated compared to the left area. So now let's add the left area that moves the opposite way. And as you can see, we now have waves coming in from the left and from the right and in the middle they should just somewhat converge and average out. So now we only have to add in the top and bottom. And now we have all four sides converging towards the island. It's quite subtle, but it is happening. It doesn't quite look right though, does it? So maybe we can raise the frequency a bit to have smaller waves. No, this is definitely way too busy. This is not too bad, so I lowered the amplitude a bit further and I slowed down the wave, keeping the same frequency though. You know what, let's try add just a tiny bit of random noise again. It's very subtle, but I think it kinda makes you believe there are some smaller waves going on and some small reflections happening. So yeah, I mean, it's quite subtle, but I am starting to warm up to it. Let me know what you think in the comments and maybe we can iterate on this a bit further in the future. But that's gonna have to be it for this week's devlog. As always, not as much progress as I would have liked, but we still got some stuff done. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you again in the next devlog of Sharks Working Title. Mm -hmm.